here this is the this is the pulpit of course I think they put this thing around and I'm not sure if that was there there but when you come into Plymouth Plantation you don't know what this building is but but this building was the most important building uh, even though it's a replica of the whole life life of the pilgrims not only was this a, it's the religious center this was the politics of the pilgrims this is where everything went in the meeting this is called the meeting house we had a, a meeting house in Framingham Massachusetts at the old burial ground where it was p pretty much just like this it was the religious instruction for the community and it was also the politics of the town but people don't show you that because they don't want to get into the religious the religious aspects of, of, of uh, Plymouth Plantation so there and I will bring it up again to show you this was what you see in that building which nobody talks about showing our Christian heritage so when you when you look into this it's a really uh, interesting topic you know why do they do this because it's because people rewrite history they don't want to show you the Christian heritage of Plymouth Plantation so as you see uh, as we go on it's it, it says here um, the Bible together with many other Christian works is listed in every pilgrim household showing indisputably that the lives revolved around the Word of God and its teachings but again when you go to Plymouth plantation you don't see you don't it's not pushed it's not shown because they they don't want to show you the Christian history of Plymouth plantation uh, let's go on here with some I'm, I think I have okay let's read this here it says here too and I'll bring this up in the back it says the way that Plymouth Plantation currently reenacts the lifestyle of these pilgrims is clearly false. It is also dangerous in terms of, of a nation's foundation, foundational Christian history being wrongly interpreted and passed down to succeeding generations of impressionable American youth. So this is something uh, that is mentioned in in the. Um, the, the book that, that's written about this. This here uh, shows you uh, basically uh, when the pilgrims came over here, if you will notice, uh, this man is, is uh, holding a Bible. And uh, it's incredible that when, when people look at this, they don't understand the Christian heritage of Plymouth Plantation and the Mayflower Compact and all these things that go into explaining um, about our Christian her heritage and our Christian history. So anyways, uh, like I said, this is Catherine Millen's book, The Rewriting of American History. <clears throat> What's really interesting about this book, I think, and I encourage anybody, if you can get it on, on Amazon or somewhere else, get this book because this goes back not only to the pilgrims, but it goes back to, to uh, uh, I mean, all Pennsylvania, it goes to Washington, D.C., uh, showing you a, a lot of the artifacts around Washington, D.C., uh, Christian in nature. But, and even though she doesn't really mention it in this book, you will also notice that there was a war going on, the Bible calls it the war in heaven, where even in Washington, D.C. now, they estimate uh, paganness. Uh, you'll see a, a uh, uh, structures to show Aquarius and all these moon things and uh, uh, things d uh, showing uh, pagan doctrine being brought into it. Um, so she doesn't mention it in her book. Now to show you what I'm talking about about paganism of Washington D.C. In the in the uh, picture here, you see the a book. It's called The Secret Architecture of a Nation's Capital. Now <clears throat> this book is really interesting because it shows some interesting stuff. Uh, let me read the uh, inside of the cover. This book is by a man named David Overson. And he, it says here, it tells the exciting story of the secret symbolism of Washington, D.C., which has remained hidden for over two centuries. Today, there are more than 20 complete zodiacs in Washington, D.C., each one pointing to an extraordinary mystery. David Overson, who has studied these astrological devices for 10 years, now reveals why. They have been placed in such abundance in the center of our nation's capital and explains their interconnections. His richly illustrated text tells the story of how Washington, from its foundation 
1791 was linked with the zodiac, with the measuring, with the meaning of certain stars, and with a hidden cosmological symbolism that he uncovers here for the first time. He goes on to say in the book, <clears throat> uh, he says 20 or 30, he says there were over 30 zodiacs in the city. And I'd like to read this last point that he brings out. <clears throat> that I know of no other city in the world with such a multitude of public zodiacs displayed in so small a space. In London, for example, there are presently four public zodiacs, of which the Bracket House Zodiac in Cannon Street is probably the most beautiful. In Oxford, England, there is only one, that on the Fitzjames Arch in Merton College, which by its very place it should not really be called public, in Boston, Massachusetts, I know of three zodiacs, the two most impressive being the atrium zodiac on the floor of the public library and the Egypto-Babylonian zodiac in the ceiling painting by John Singer Sargent on the second floor. In New York, the most beautiful public zodiac is that encircling the statue of Prometheus by Paul Manship in the Rockefeller Plaza. Even Florence, the ancient city which gave birth to the Renaissance in the 15th century, has only three public zodiacs. As we shall see, the mythology of the stellar lights plays an essential part in the foundation of the history of the federal city. So the point I want to make, and as I was, I was, I was bringing out, uh, the, the uh, history of our nation <clears throat> is actually a history of a fight between good and evil. And, uh, and as you know, uh, in Plymouth Plantation, we have the good. We have the good that's being ignored, the Christian history that's being ignored. And in Washington, D.C., remember, of all the world, Washington, D.C., it has over 20 or 30 zodiacs, meaning that Washington was attacked by some sort of demonic activity while Christianity was being tried to be brought in. And, of course, we uh, brought out some good stuff about Washington uh, in David Barton's videos showing you the Christian history of Washington, D.C. But I'm also trying to show you that they had a, a, a fight with the people who were involved with these zodiacs and these, this paganism. So Washington, D.C. is just one big ball of Christian fighting demonic activity, which still is going on. That's probably why nothing's getting done there. <laughs> so anyways... That's basically what I, I have on um, this topic. Uh, I told you that I promised you that we will be dealing with Leo Martin and the rest of the show. Uh, Leo Martin deals with the Forefathers Monument, and let's at least look at the Christian history of that monument, the things he talks about, and um, <clears throat> hopefully this fight between Christianity and the evil and the zodiacs and the paganism and all these things. Uh, you'll see that Leo Martin brings out that at least one uh, monument uh, could be looked at for the positive. So let's go to Leo Martin as he talks about the, um, the Forefathers Monument. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sure. 